Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. It's time to, to get give the uh, Echisocelatus babies uh, who are doing quite well. Um, see if we can get them started on, on mice bits. Um, <laughs> which unfortunately requires dismembering previously deceased mice and what we'll do is we'll skin the uh, skin the forearm that we're gonna we're gonna provide here <clears throat> so maybe a little bit more Appreciate it. The whole idea is to get it to pissed off enough to strike and hold, but you have to watch out because this, oh, well, that was a good strike. Now, you gotta time it so you, it stays in its mouth. <laughs> Which, as you can see, being lightning fast, it's very difficult to do. Come on. Come on, there's no reason to get all excited. Just cooperate and eat. Well, right now, it's used to me. When I come to bother, it, it's usually the cannula. Really? Yeah. Problem is this method, well, almost, is this uh, consumes energy, and that's something we don't want to want to necessarily do. So let's go to Plan B, and what I'll do is I'll pin it, or attempt to pin it. It's a little live wire. And we'll get it used to uh, taking. We'll stick this in his mouth, and we'll see how this. Uh, he of course doesn't want it in his mouth, so that's the intermediate step. So we'll just let him chill for a second and see if he a spits it out or b chows it down and if that's the case I will prepare another one for it to uh, and we'll repeat that this is the first time that it's I've offered it mouse so we have to maybe it's instinctual uh, taste buds will kick in and say oh well, I got this thing in my mouth, but it sort of tastes like it's supposed to be there. But who knows? It could spit it out, uh, and we could uh, be back at square one. However, you know, with as Lori knows, with baby snakes, when they have it in their mouth, if you, I'm surprised me talking has not caused it to spit it out. Uh, venomous snakes or snakes in general realize if they've got something in their mouth they can't quite defend themselves the way they could if they didn't have something in their mouth so they're very quick to spit it out if they perceive a, an immediate threat Now, if, if we fail at this and they're not quite ready, they're doing quite well on cannula feedings. They've grown to be, well, would you say at least twice their size? 
definitely doubled in size. Um, and that's just with one reasonable fe feeding of baby food uh, once a week essentially. That's all they get. They get almost a, a cc of baby food. I've been increasing that a little bit when they've been increasing in on size because you don't want them regurgitating because that's no good either. So it's better to keep the meals a little small and uh, f fill them up. Are you just going to sit there? Huh? Oh, I see. Yeah, I moved to look at you, didn't I? You know, I, I could put it back in its box where it might feel more secure, but I find that it's much better to have them sort of under scrutiny on the tabletop where they know uh, for them bad things happen like force feeding uh, and to put them back in their bins. Just relax and eat the mouse bit. another one here just in case that one starts to make its way down actually it is this was the smallest one of the group too It really requires patience to do this. Sometimes I have it, sometimes I don't. And it's just like, I don't have time to screw around with you. Much better if you take it on your own. When you're force feeding, you have to be careful that bone protruding doesn't perforate their gut. short life for them then. Yeah. 
Oh, I know, I know. That's revolting, huh? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. This, of course, is much more dangerous than cannula feeding. Oh, you had to poop on me, huh? Well, that'll smell good at work tomorrow. <laughs> All right, relax. Come on, go ahead. I was gonna try to pick it up and put it back in its tub, because that's all we'll go for is just two. We'll, we'll try a little bit more, uh, maybe in a night or so. Come on. I'm trying not to grab it because grabbing it will cause it to uh, spit it out. He's trying to do that now. Let's see, now you got substrate on it. Go on. Nope, we're going to spit it out. Hey, Thud. Thud likes when we're feeding babies because Thud gets the spoils of war. Hey. There you go. If Thud re refuses a meal, you know he's sick. <laughs> Alright, so that's what we'll do with him tonight. Now these guys were initially eating gecko tails. These are the bigger ones. Uh, they were eating gecko tails and then stopped eating gecko tails. As you can see, these are a little bit bigger than the other one. But I guarantee you, the feisty is not going to hold it in its mouth when I offer it. Of course. It's, it's doing the mouth thing, which a lot of snakes will do, and they'll part their lips to show you that uh, they mean business. He grabbed that and threw it. Get that crap out of my <laughs> face, Viper Keeper. Okay, if that's the way you're going to play. We'll do this the hard way. I'll bring you out here into my arena. And 
No, you are going to run, aren't you? Come on. Don't waste much energy. Come on. You know, as I was told a long time ago when by someone who was a lot more experienced than I do, you never press a bad position. So we wait to pick our position, even though it might take longer. to have them facing this way. Hmm? And he knows it. Yes. They do learn. These are not dumb animals. Okay. It's the silver tools, you don't like those. Doesn't seem to be coming out, doesn't seem to be going down either. Oh, it's gone down a little bit. You did this sort of stealth swallow. There we go. Yeah, I know yeah, you. Oops, now he's trying to spit it out again. Now, ideally, you would want to try to approach with another one to piggyback it, but you can see that uh, he's quite irritable, and I don't think that will happen. There's no way that you can stealthily get it near their <laughs> mouth. There's not much, there's some meat on the bones, but this will give him some uh, proteins uh, uh, that he is, wasn't getting in the baby food, also lots of calcium uh, from the bones. I'm not chasing you, trying to kill you or anything. Hmm. There's one twitchy snake. Mm-hmm. You got that down? Yeah. come after me with that piece of mouse. I'm not interested in that. Sideways. Mm, 
people wonder why I don't have a lot of time. Feeding baby snakes, says Mrs. Viper Keeper News, is very time consuming. Yeah, like I said, these guys ate gecko tails before. Uh, can I just uh, loop you up? Come on, look. Relax, relax. I know, I know. I'm just trying to scoop you up and not make you spit that out. That one would eat it too. How about you? You haven't eaten in quite some some time there, really, huh? Yeah. Nope. Add some heat to it. Oh. Oh, these guys. There we go. <laughs> require prodding. Okay, except for that one. That one it eats quite well on its own. Since she hasn't eaten in a long time, and that one has, she will get the next one if she wants it to. <laughs> um, you got to strike where the iron is hot with these guys. Uh, the Jararaca, you know, eats all the time, no problem at all. Whereas that particular in Solaris doesn't eat very often. Are you visiting with Elvis? Hello, Elvis. Well, this looks like you're standing down a little bit because I've been feeding as much as I was, which is... Good. And he's not happy about it either. No, no. He's, <laughs> he's like, I'll kill you if you don't feed me more. Very nearly succeeded. Mm. Well, here's one we don't get to see all that often. It's usually hiding in its little hut there. The Jaraka causes lots of death and discomfort in its native Brazil. I think these are among only the few that are in the U.S. Because um, Brill doesn't, Brazil doesn't export their, their fauna and flora. They will kill it where it sits in the rainforest, but they won't export they it to, export them. to zoos and, uh, and people who would like to breed and propagate them and not let them go extinct. But that's how these countries work. Oh, you can't have it for, you know, uh, your scientific collection or you can't have it in your zoo, but we can kill it and destroy its habitat so it goes extinct. It's just the way governments think. up again yep okay and moving along so number three the next happy little camper
<laughs> you poked me. Use your tongue. Figure out that it's it's not something that is going to uh, to kill you outright. As a matter of fact, it could be tasty. Yeah. You don't look like you're interested in, uh, in being nice to it. Yeah. No throwing echis, Mr. Yes. Viper Keeper. No throwing snakes at me. We've done that. So let's place, tease the echis and get it to bite, but hopefully not your finger. There we go. It's not interested. You know, I think, uh, I think what we will do is ooh, spewing poo all over the place. Yeah. I think what we will do is we will go back to the cannula feeding. These guys just aren't quite ready yet. Okay, one, two, three. Believe it or not, pinning them is not the difficult part. It's releasing them because when they throw their head around, if your finger is close enough, it only needs to scratch you uh, to be envenomated. Uh, so, uh, you know, every person that I've met that does a lot of venom extractions, it's not so much the pin, it's the release that causes them to cringe. Yep. And we are going to be difficult and spit it out. He's more interested in running. Yeah, there's always one runner in the entire group. Come on over here. I've noticed these insularis, they have very small gullets. You have to provide smaller food. Um, for them to swallow it easier. Uh, you know, I've given them large mice, and they can do large mice. I saw this one person who I, I chastised and didn't like it, of course, trying, because he only had rats available, and he was feeding it to an ins blue insularis, and it's like, one, the snake doesn't eat that much food, B, it's a very large meal, uh, you should give snakes smaller meals more often than big large meals. Okay. Are you ready to, to try this one? Are you ready? Oh, you are. Okay, good. Well, I managed to get that down. All right. And Blue and Solaris got the second one if you want to pan over. Just got the second one in her trap. And like I said, she hasn't eaten in a while. Um, so she's deserved of uh, the second one. If I would have thought about it, I would have. given uh, her a third one uh, and not give fat so uh, <laughs> oh, sad. He's such a nice snake though, but you know, he just... He's a little pee. He will eat until he explodes. And that's not necessarily, uh, you know, a good healthy for him. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, I want, I want to pity one last time. Come on. You got one down. You got one down. One more to go. Okay, this time 
I did it the smart way and I dropped it in its tub. Give it some privacy why it eats. Okay, so that took a long time to do as usual. Uh, but that's what you have to do if you want to propagate uh, different species of snakes. It just, uh, it just takes time and you have to be willing to put it in.